guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to Fashion Court Channel with me, Dr. Clement Asem Enyura. This is a special episode right from you from our live class on Instagram. Today, we are going into details, into everything bone anatomy. I'm super excited because you and I know garment fit comes in three forms. We have easy fitting, close fitted, and loose fitted. The device that gives that sculpturization, that tapering, hook, and support in our close fitted garments is bone in. Let's get learning after the break. <laughs> guys welcome back boning are basically defined as rigid rod plastics or metal sewn into channels of garments boning help you to achieve the sculpturization you require in garment pieces like corsets bustiers um, cascade peplums that you want it to stand and create that kind of a boom effect and trust me you are just admiring this right away and is the help of boning. Boning is making this bustier or corset feel so tight and beautiful. And you can just imagine having this on your body. Kindly observe this as well. This is a cage act. And this cage act is stunning so well and structured because of boning. Boning is helping us have this effect required. And with also inserted here in the casings, this one lays on the woman's body will give that kind of snatch effect. Right behind me too, you can see a foundation garment made with boning. This is standing and looking so rigid because the bone in there, it's preventing it from lagging down. So boning indeed helps garment pieces to stand, prevent it from what? Wrinkling and helps to maintain its shape. So you have to use boning when you really want to achieve that snatch effect. So we've seen a lot of pieces here that have boning working some magic in there. We equally have to understand that boning comes in different types and different width. It's very important to understand what you are doing before selecting the type of boning or the width needed. So I want to quickly take you through the types of boning we have. Number one. The plastic bone. This is the plastic bone. It comes in different width. Um, you choose the width based on what you're doing, like I said. And it's very important to understand how to treat the edges after cutting it. So let's say you require to cut a measurement. We use our normal scissors in cutting this bone. After cutting, you have a very straight edge. We have various ways of treating this edge. I advise always give an arc shape to the edge of your bone to prevent it from poking out when you add or you attach it to your garment. So how do you obtain or make this curved or arc shape I'm talking about? It's just by using your scissors, just cut and create an arc like this. This prevents the edge from poking out from the garment and it's very important to get a nail file to file it. Filing prevents all strings and pointed tips of the plastic from being active. Our boning number two is the rigeling bone, popularly known as the sew-on bone. I love this bone so much. This is the rigeling bone. With the rigeling bone tool, it's easy to cut with your scissors. With the help of your scissors, measure the length you want and you can easily cut it. And the little secret to keeping the edge very clean and from poking out is by stitching a piece of fabric just at the tip. Or you can use your masking tape. I love the masking tape trick. You can use your masking tape 
tape the edge like this. Make sure you press it firmly because it's plastic and it will definitely stick to the adhesive on the tape. Then with the help of your scissors, cut S's off the edge. You are good to use it. Boning number three, the flat steel boning. This is the flat steel boning. You will see this boning in the great designer pieces from Yves Saint Laurent, Kristen Dior. And during the Victorian era, this bone was used a lot. It's kind of very fatiguing when it's in a corset and can help one not to breathe. I love this bone when inserted close to the grommet area of a corset because it enables the back to sit very, very fine. And in cutting this bone, it comes in different length. But obviously, when you're doing certain pieces, you would have to shorten them. It's quite thick and you need a heavy duty cutter like this to cut. And because cutting it can be very difficult, I recommend you put on a protective eyewear before cutting. So you have to mark the length required. Then with the help of the cutter, you can just go like this. Good. That was very sharp. But make sure you have your protective wear on. And in treating the edge of the flat steel bone, you could use your glue gun. You could melt the glue, apply the glue to the tip just to prevent the sharp edge from poking out. You can equally use a steel filer to file the edge just to protect it. So this is the flat steel bone. Bony number four. The spiral bone. This is my all fab bone. And this bone works magic and I always say it saves designers the headache of having poking apex points and what a view. This spiral bones also comes in different width and you can equally buy them in a roll. In cutting this, you just need your normal cutter like this. So you just measure the length you require then good to go, you're good. This bone comes with the U covering tips. So if you have some of your U covering tips, you can just refix it just to protect the edge. If you don't have the covering tip, after cutting you observe, there is some pointy of the copper right here. Just use your cutter to recut those little pointy edges just to have the rounded base showing and you are good to go. You can easily fix this and make those beautiful corsets, bustiers and what have you. Now that you have seen the four types of boning, it's very important for us to understand some little rules or tricks when you're applying this boning in your garment. It's very, very important. One, when it comes to boning like the plastic boning or rigeline boning, they have their orientation. If you observe this bone, it comes with its own orientation, how it's been act. When you're applying this bone or that of the rigeline in a garment, please observe the orientation. If you want to apply this at the back area or your bust, it goes this way. You can turn it. In turning it, you are preventing the boning from relaxing and performing a duty. So with this direction or contour, you have to fix the boning like this. It's very, very important. Number two, when attaching the bone, always reduce the length by one and a half cm. The reason for this is, you may want to attach your lining to the neck area or finish the edges. If you use the same length or measurement of bone, it means you have no tolerance for stitching, which will force you to stitch on the bone. And that can be very, very dangerous. So always reduce the length by one and a half cm so that when you are applying or stitching it to the fashion fabric or your lining, you will leave a little space above and beneath so that in attaching your lining, you can easily have it attached so easily. So that has been the trick. And let me take you through a little practice of how to stitch 
some of the boning. So we are going to learn how to apply some of the bonings we have discussed. This is a stitched fuse bustier. Here is the seams at the apex line, our princess line. And you can see I have pressed the seams right into the curve. In attaching your rigeling bone, there is a trick I want you to observe. I'm going to pick the seams together the center front and the side seam. This is my regioling bone, which I have cleaned or finished the tip. I'm not going to start stitching from the edge because I told you we want our lining to pick the edge. So I'll bring it down a little. I'm going to stitch close to the original seam here. And in stitching, you make sure you are stitching just at the tip of the bone. You stitch gently. And with this method, I can now push this into the garment. With the first stitch, you're not going to see the stitch at the right side. It's just on the seams. So I'm now going to introduce my main seam at the outer lane for us to have a weld seam. So after stitching, at the right side, you see just one seam line, one seam line. So that is how I have applied my regioling bone. Now we go to the plastic bone. In stitching of the plastic bone, I'm going to create a casing here. And this is the trick, always stitch having in mind the width of your plastic bone, adding a little tolerance to it. If you use the exact width, it may be very difficult pushing the bone in. And if you overstitch the measurement, you're going to have your bone turn or twist in the casing. So in inserting this bone, just like how I said earlier, I'll make sure I have an arc of the edge, a beautiful arc, and with the help of my file, file to contour the edge. This will enable me to slot in the bone easily. And like I said, always observe orientation. I want this to snatch the waist. So I'm going to fix it this way. You see? So that is it. So you can see it's fitted. It's not so loose and it's not so tight in there. So my casing is ready and it's either you have your U-tape protecting the edge or you make sure you cut all the poking copper wire tips before you insert it.
so you see that was easy and sometimes to protect the tips I mentioned you should reduce the boning by one and a half cm you can choose to block all your channels at the point where you want to use the tolerance or the weight bennet to attach either your peplum your skirt or your dress so that once you put in the bone the blocked area will help secure or prevent the boning from coming out so that has been it on the little tricks on how to apply some of the bonings i hope this episode has been insightful let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section and give me a thumbs up and make sure you share this video with your friends everyone who will find this video very useful a very big thank you to sogasm ghana for making all the supplies on my set possible i'm going to leave their handle in the description box below contact them if you need any kind of boning all the cutters and what of you sogasm ghana and do well to follow me on instagram dr clement asem inyura also at fashion masterclass africa Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're watching me for the first time. And don't forget to hit on the notification bell icon. Be the first to be notified anytime I upload a video. And don't miss it. See you in the next class.